My name is Brad Noblet. I'm a production manager here at WUFT TV at the University of Florida. I'm talking to you today about uh, nonlinear editing. The differences between linear editing and nonlinear ed editing is, is truly remarkable. Um, linear editing back in the day was when you had machines physically going tape to tape and, and a lot of moving parts, uh, a lot of margin of error there. But, but that was, that's how we got started. Linear editing allows us to digitize the material into a computer system and manage those clips um, through individual clips and bins. And when you take a clip, you put it into a timeline. You mark it in, you mark it out, and then you lay it into your sequence. And your sequence consists of video layers and audio layers. And uh, the great part about nonlinear editing, it's very easy to teach because you can stop at any moment in time and physically see what's happening in this sequence at this time. Where in linear editing, you had to kind of visualize what was going on. You had your audio and your video going along. And when you wanted to make a transition, you had to get multiple tapes involved and go back and sync those up and roll those through each time. In, in nonlinear editing, what you do is you just back to back two clips and add a transition in between. And if you don't like it, you have the undo button. And you can go back in time and change it again and again and again. And that's something linear editing did not offer. The editing process has changed greatly over the years, and it, it, again, it's, it's from linear to nonlinear. Linear, we had tape after tape after tape after tape. We also had a lot of moving parts, which, which made it challenging if, if something happened with your machine, then you were kind of stuck. You, you had to go get a lot of help. Uh, with nonlinear editing, it, it's, it's a computer. It really is. And, and what you're doing is you've got to manage those clips. But you're able to bring in different files and formats and graphics and all in one powerful editing system. So really you're one man banding this entire project where you don't need to go get a graphics operator. You don't need to go get a, uh, an engineer to come help you. You physically manage the project from start to finish. And by, by assigning your clips in there, by assigning your audio, your music, and then your graphics all are layered up to, make, to tell your stories. The workflow in nonlinear is everything. I mean, you, have to, you have to be on top of your game here and manage your clips. You have to manage all of your assets. You want to make sure you have backups of all your files as you go in. You want to name your project correctly. You want to make sure that your target and your scratch disk are all where they need to be. Um, there's nothing worse than having everything scattered everywhere throughout your computer or external drives. And if something changes, then you lose that media. So what you want to do is make sure that your, your project gets named properly, all your targets are set, and you import everything consistently. Make sure your naming uh, structure is, is very, very consistent. Because really, you know, if, if you do the homework up front, it'll pay big dividends in the long term. There are many different nonlinear editing programs out there. There's Avid, there's Final Cut Pro, there's Adobe Premiere. All are great programs. It's just kind of what, what works best for you. There's advantages and disadvantages to all of them. Um, Adobe Premiere is a great program because it's a part of the Adobe family and you can jump in and out of their products very seamlessly. Final Cut Pro is going through a major change right now and, and with uh, Final Cut 10. I'm not that familiar with it, but it seems like um, they've kind of stepped back to more of an iMovie. They've kind of abandoned the broadcasters, which is fine, but uh, they're, they're kind of targeting more of a niche audience right now. And Avid is still uh, very mainstream. They've gone through some major changes, and they're kind of targeting for the broadcast professional. So there, there's all these different programs, but once you learn one, you, you know the concepts, you can edit in any of them. My advice to editing is, is just to, to learn and watch a lot of different programs. See how the cuts are going along. See how the pacing is. Again, it's, it's file management. It's, it's getting into a flow. It's, it's more of how does the clips feel. Do, do we tell a story in a timely manner? Uh, my advice there is don't get stuck in a time, a time frame that somebody comes in and says, I need to make a five-minute video. Well. You know, do a video that, that tells the story in the proper amount of time. It may take two minutes, it may take ten minutes.
But if your writing's good and your story's good, then that should flow. And, and you want to keep it visual. You want to keep things moving. Uh, a lot of talking heads is not good. Uh, B-roll, B-roll, B-roll. I mean, that's what keeps things going and, and keeps your audience engaged is the motion. There, there's movement within it. There's music. All these things tell the story, and that's what you want to do versus just a talking head after a talking head. If you can visually reference, we, we use a term called say dog, see dog. If, if you can see what they're talking about or give a demonstration of a how-to, say this is how to change the oil on a car, and the first step is, well, then you visually go in and, and show step by step by step visually what you're doing, and, and your audience will, will, will learn so much quicker from it. Any advice I could give about video editing and shooting is just practice, practice, practice. I mean, go out there and just watch a lot of television. What you want to do is, is work with your peers and see what they're doing. Um, really analyze different stories on the newscast. See how they shot different things. And physically, just go out and start shooting and editing. That's the only way you're really going to learn how to do this. Force yourself to get out of your comfort zone and, and go out there and start shooting like a news or, or a production person. Um, you know, cutaways, cutaways, cutaways. Uh, do interviews with people. Get, get familiar with lighting and understand really how your camera works inside and out. That's the thing is once you've mastered how to technically do something, then your craft starts to build as far as the content. Once you've mastered, you know, how to white balance the camera, get good audio, those are things that just kind of come naturally to you and you stop forgetting about all the technical aspects of it and then you get into the storytelling. So it's just getting so much practice in and, and really understanding how to technically do something that your craft can kind of be formed to tell the story.